Hello friends, welcome back to Netcode Up channel. In this video, we are going to talk about AutoMapper Data Transfer Object that is known as DTO. So in this video, we are going to understand DTO and also have a practical look at DTO. How is it used? Why do we use? We we'll talk about that in this video. So first of all, let's understand what DTO or data object or data transfer object is and what is AutoMapper. Now through the site uh, simplylearn.com, AutoMapper in C Sharp is a library used to map data from one object to another. It acts as a mapper between two objects and transforms one object type into the another. So that is the auto mapper. Now they are used to transfer data between database and a client. Yeah. So this um, DTO it is not mapped to database, so we can decide on which properties that we want to include or exclude. So in case you are getting data from database and you want to take some data the, the data and leave some over there, it is possible with the DTO data transfer object. You can decide which property that you want to use or you want to get in your data um, base or your table that you want to show to a client. Remember that D2 is used to transfer data between the database and the client. So from client to database, you can use DTO. And from database to client to you're going to use DTO. Let's have a practical look with this. So you understand what actually DTO is and what actually is it uh, auto mapper and how we can use them together so what you have to do here is you're going to create a web api project so create web api project in the visual studio 2022 and remember that we are using .NET 7 so that's what we are using .NET 7.0 that's a framework that we are using so when you go to my solution explorer you see we have i have a project here already project now this project contains nothing if i run this you can see i'm gonna have um, a project going to run and I'm going to have no projects or operations defined in the spec so nothing here okay so this is the empty project now the first thing that we're going to do here is we need to install some of our packages and these packages are what we're going to use in our project so let's add them go to solution explorer now right click on dependencies and click on manage nugget packages now in here try to install this I've done them already um, so try to install the first one is the automapper.extensions.microsoft.dependency injection by Jimmy so try to install this first when you're done install entity framework core entity framework core SQL and entity framework core tools try to install these four packages this is the first one is automapper any framework call SQL Server and tools. So these are the packages that we need for this particle. All right. So now we have them installed. Uh, we can now move on with our work. So we need to create um, a class. Let's have a look at uh, employee data management. So we want to create a class. But before that, let's add model. So add um, folder and let's name this as models. Now with these models, let's add one model and it's a class and that's going to be an employee. So you want to grab an employee as a class. Now with this employee, you want to first get, so you want to first get, that's an ID. The next one that you want to get here is name and that's supposed to be string. Let's make it nullable and that is name now we want to add so let's add string nullable and that's going to be department so we can take this off now the one that we want to add here that is date time say date time and that's going to be um date registered okay now this you want to have set a default value so we want to say date time dot now 
date time dot now so that is the default value for date time okay let's also set a static so static that is going to be um let's make that integer and static salary so we set this to also a static one and let's say um let's thousand five okay so we set this so we see salary date registered they have a default value name department and now right good now let's save this now we want to create our dto's so the dto in the dto we have the request dto and we have response dto now what is request dto request dto it is where a data is coming from the client into the database and the response is where the data is um, coming from database to the client okay so for client to database it means that it is post the client is filling something so it is post that is what request dto now when a client try to get data from database that is what response because it is getting response to the client so we need to create these um dto's right click on our project let's add another folder and this folder is going to name it as dto's so with the dto's we want to create request and response what dto so let's add a class and there's going to be a re response dto and now let's add one more that's going to be a request dto so and that's going to be a request dto all right so we have this now let's specify each properties so let's go in there now we want to grab everything except the id in a response because response we don't need the id we need only the other one so that's a re response so response we need these properties here we need name uh, department date registered and salary so we don't need the id okay so we don't need the id for the response for this project we don't need the id because we want to show it to the user so we don't need the person's id all right so when we get to request when um, a new entry is being made we want to grab only name and profit uh, that is department why are you grabbing name and department you know with the id when we perform migration it's going to have it as primary key so it's going to be automatically assigned now date registered we have it value already salary to it is static so we have the value already so we don't need any of these you rather need to specify only these two and that's what you are doing it here so this two is going to come in now when it gets to this um class it's going to this is going to also associate or assign it value here so we're going to assign it value here so we have these values when they get a the database you know with the id since it is a primary key and it is identity identity it's going to assign it also key to it automatically so you can see at the end of the day you're going to have all these properties with their values all right so once you have these two dto's we can now save them okay now um let's close these dto's so once you are done with this the next thing that we can actually do here is we are going to create our database now to create a database first we let's specify our um connection first so app settings.json let's specify connection and now here connection string so in this let's give it a name as default connection now with the default connection we specify the server as so the server that we are using here it is local now database is equal to so database is equal to and auto mapper so let's make that auto auto mapper dto okay that's database now trusted let's set trusted connection so trusted connection we set to true then let's trust server certificate so certificate let's set this also to true now we are done with that connection so now the next thing to do here is we save this and now remember the name of the connection is default connection so we can actually copy this 
now let's close this and let's create our connection file so first of all let's create that so to create it let's create another folder and that's going to name it as data that's going to hold our db context file so data let's create a class in that data that data folder so add a class and this class is going to be app db contest so this class is going to hold our connection to the database now this class let's inherit from db contest because it has the, the ability to get us what we need in the database so click on this now let's create a constructor so control plus dot now generate a constructor with these options and now with options here let's pass in the app db contest file so we have it here now let's specify our database table so here db sets then the name is what employee that is a class the main class that we are depending on that's the employee and employer it is what employees so we are done with that class now we can actually close this and now let's go to our program.cs file let's register our connections so builder dot services so dot add db contest now here we specify the app db contest so app db contest then we pass in an option so with this options we specify the various options dot use the property that we the package that we installed that is an sql server and now we have to get let's get the connection string name and that is so builder.configuration dot get connection string name and the name here is that is default connection from the app settings so now we have it set already all right now the next thing that we can actually do here is after adding our db contest file and register our services we can actually go in there and perform our database migration okay so once we have these two tdos that is a response and the request dto we can actually now move on and perform our database migration so before that we want to let's register the package so let's register this as well in a program.cs file here now to register that you go for builder dot services so dot we can add add auto mapper and auto mapper that is over here so auto mapper then in here we need to specify the type of so type of now with this type of we are going to say it is programs so program then dot assembly so we are done registering our um the auto mapper as well so the next thing to do here is we need to let's go to solution explorer now let's create a profile for this auto mapper before we create our controller okay so let's see add folder and the name of the folder here is going to be our uh, profiles so this profiles so with this profile let's add auto mapper profile that's going to be a class and now we are saying auto mapper profile so auto mapper profile now this profile needs to inherit from the profile class so it's inheriting from this profile class now let's create a constructor to initialize it so we create a constructor over here to initialize it now let's create our map so let's create map now with this map first of all you want to map from employee okay then you want to map to response so response dto then you can close this so it means we are getting data from employee then we give it to the response okay now the next one here is we want to also um, create an insertion uh, uh, that is a post so you want to get from a request 
DTO, then remove it, give it to employee. So this means that the first one is getting from database to the client. The second one is getting from the client to the database. So this is from, so we can indicate here as, so this is from, okay, from DB to, that is a client, and here it is from, here it is from client to DB. I believe this is clear. So this is a client, the request DTO is from the client and to the DB. And this is from the DB to the client. So there's going to be a response. Now this is a request. Okay. So let's save this. Now once you have our profile created, let's create our controller. So um, let's close all these. Now in our controller, I click on the folder, click on add, and I'll add new controller. We're going for an API MT1. So we can give it a name as employee. So let's say employee. Employee controller. Let's add that. So what you have to do here is uh, let's create a constructor of this. Here we are not creating, we are not using any classes or any um, service to render that. Okay, you want to create a fat controller. You want to put everything here. So let's call our AppDB contest here. So AppDB contest. And then we give it an object name as DB contest. So click control plus dot. Let's create an assigned field. The next thing to do here is this get method. So HTTP and this is get. Now with this get, we have public and you want to call as a task. So task is action results. And this action result is carrying a list of. Now this is response. You want to use response DTO because you are getting it from the database. So response DTO and that is get employees. So with it get employees, what is it? The next thing to do, let's get all employees here and store it in the variable. So it's called to, let's use an await keyword, which is going to be add the async. Now app db contest dot now employees table dot so we can go in for two list two list async now you have the employees at hand so let's map the employee object to the response dto object so how are you going to do this it is very simple what you have to do here is we can pass in the return so okay you know since it is an, a controller you need to pass an okay now with this okay we're going to pass in this employees you know this employees is coming from the employee model so dot then we can use select now with this select let's initialize our mapper here so let's call so i mapper then we can give it a name as mapper so click on this and control plus dot let's create an assign property so we can use let's we can actually use this but in order to confuse us or to use the appropriate one or the simple one so you can actually pass in uh this so i mapper then we can use this of course so i mapper and this mapper then we can call this and we are, we, we can say this dot mapper is equal to mapper we are done so in here we select we want to add mapper the mapper object so the mapper object let's see so the mapper object that we have created dot map okay so dot map then let's map this response dto so we want to map to response dto and this is quite simple so we have to close that and we need to close once as more so let's say employee dot select mapper dot map then response dto all right so return okay and we have this set length 
we are good to go all right so we have an error here that we need to fix it up so mapper dot so select and here's supposed to be that's right so I learned it is okay now so now we are mapping this employee is coming from the model that's the employee model and now we are ma mapping this employee model to this response DTO and since it is a list it's going to loop through and set each to the list the number of employees that we have in this employees so we are done now let's see if we can actually have a post so with the post we can actually set here as HTTP post and the same thing so public and this time around we're still going to need this uh, signature so let's copy this and now let's paste it here and this time around we're still going to need a response DTO but here instead of the get it's going to be add so add DTO and now here we are going to pass in this request DTO but that is what is coming in so DTO and we say new employee now with this we open our parenthesis and now what is the next thing to do we have to apply the map so let's map the request to the employee the request DTO or let's map the request DTO to the model okay so first let's have let's store our employee is equal to so in order to map we call the mapper object dot map as well now with this map we pass in this employee model that we want to actually map with so that's the employee model now which one do you want to map with so that's a new employee this is very simple so we are mapping this new employee to this employee object okay now remember that this employee object has a default value that's a date registered has a default and salary also has default so this new employee here is coming from a request DTO now you know from the request DTO it has only two properties that is a name and department when you go to DTO request because it has only two properties here so user need to provide this only two and the rest are going to be added when you talk about the the daytime models daytime and salary they all have their default values here so even if you don't even provide them they have a value to be set with all right i believe this is clear now um, with the add so add employee now once we have it mapped the next thing to do here is we call the abdb contest dot employees table dot add now we need to add this the mapped employee now you know we call the await keyword then we say appdb contest dot save changes async so that is a way to save changes now to get the list we can actually call this again okay we can actually call this again or we can actually call this method so let's copy this here and let's say return so return can we call this get um, employee object can we call this here so return okay and yeah so return okay we call this employee object and now we when we call this employee object we're going to also get the whole list of this as well now let's save this now we need to perform our migration that's going to be the last one to move out with so click on tools Nugget manage nugget package and I click on console if you're not finding over here. So CLS clear the screen. Now we are in. So let's add migration. So add migration and here so create auto mapper DTO. Now that's going to be the migration name. So click on add. Now first it's going to build it. Now if everything succeeds, then it, it starts my uh, performing the migration and uh, you can see that it has performed it and you can see we have the table and the um, table name database name as what well. uh we have employees a database name so that's the table name sorry and you can see we have the various id name department date uh, department date registered salary so you can see here now is false date registered now is false because 
both have a default value set and um, primary key is set to the id all right so once we have this let's perform let's update the database so update dash database and now let's wait for the updates to to be done then we go in there to the sql server object explorer if you're not saying that go to views and i could see sql server object explorer so we see this created a table for us as you can see from here it has created create table the name is the employees id name department date registered salary and what we have a primary key set all right so it is done so uh, with this explorer click on this refresh it now open your sql server now the last one open it open database and you can see we have automapa dto let's expand that click on tables and now you have to see our dbo.employee so right click on this and now go to view data so let's set a default data here so let's expand this once let's expand this let's set a default one maybe uh, we can have as so we can have frederick hughes now we have department is it now date registered we can talk off 01 05 2020 so um salary here there's a 4500 now it's over there so one is okay now let's save this we can refresh it to see if it has the data over there and that's why it is over here so now let's run application and see what we have now so because as soon as you run it you can see we have employee then we have the get and the post so this is getting all employees and they is sending or adding an employee so as you can see with the request dto request we need to supply only two um, properties here name and department but with the response it is coming in with name department date registered and salary all right so with the get employee let's click on add uh, try it out and execute so can like you see we have only one let's see do we have it over here now it is saying that no parameterized constructor defined so let's check that in a profile so in a profile let's see so we have a public now here she's supposed to be protected but rather supposed to be public instead save that and now let's go back and uh, reload it and see what we have now so once it gets reloaded let's go again now try it out execute and i could see that we have only one so you see here we are getting name department date registered and salary so you see we are not having the other ones that's the id you're not having the id okay now um let's add when we add one you're going to have this as well so let's add add employee and we need to provide name and department only so try it out now the name that you want to provide here is let's say yao Berkon. and now the the department that we want to add here is going to be uh, let's say um cleaning okay so let's click on execute now when it gets executed it's going to return the list so we're going to have two lists and we could see let's see an instance is not supported let's see over here what it's actually trying to say so instance are not supported and now let's try that and see the response over here so let's go to the project and now create map so request dto and that is for employee right so request dto and employee when we go to the controller do we have task and um await so return this employee so getting this method or coin this method all right so this is what we can actually do let's skip this and um let's copy this and let's paste this here okay so we are returning the list over here now let's save this and now let's wait for it to get refreshed then we try that and see so with for getting whole employee we have two employees here that we're going to get so we have two employees here now um let's close that and post so try it out let's provide the albert so yeah 
back on here and now it is cleaning service in department execute now let's see all right so you can see that we have it added now you are back on cleaning and the salary is starting for 50 because these are all fixed values they are fixed and you can see we have the date also fixed as well all right so you can see as soon as we added one we have the list of these let's try to add one more so we have your um we have your boate so this boate can be a form of hr now let's execute and i can see we have four all right so we see that we may be able to implement the the dto for a request and a response and so we're able to provide the auto mapper so one of one um good thing about this is if you want to you can see that instead of here if there's no auto mapper we're supposed to use you have to map them manually so new employee dot name is equal to response detail dot uh, name and etc but since we have the auto mapper just one line and boom we are done I believe this is simple and this is clear as well. I'll have this um, code, I'll have it a link under the description so you can click on that to grab this code from the GitHub and um, can just look through. In case you couldn't, you want to just check it up, it is possible. Okay, so I'll make it available as well. All right, so that is it for this video. I believe everything is clear and thank you guys for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.